we are going to take a look at the new Citrans library faceplates for TIA portal version 15.1 and above. They're designed to uh, work with WinCC Professional, so version 15.1 or version 16. Uh, we haven't got these for the um, HMI, so that will come on release 2. So the first thing you need to do is um, when you get your library, it's uh, it's zipped. So we have a look here. This you'll get this dot zal uh, zip file. So you can, if you have a look at this, you can have a look at the archive. I've already extracted it. You get all of these files and the uh, the actual library uh, extension. So extract that. Keep that somewhere safe. And then open on TIA portal, open your global libraries, so on the right hand side, and then click on open global library, and you will see in here your library file. Now I'm not going to click on open because I've, I've already opened it, and you can see it here on the, on the right hand side. So that's step one, get your library open. It'll take a little bit longer to open it for the first time. And under here, you've got your PLC blocks and you have um, your WinCC Professional faceplates and then you've got your WinCC Professional um, common uh, uh, screens you'll see down here, HMI tags. So, um, three of the devices on the Citrans library are heart devices. So the, the first thing we need to do is just tidy up our... Uh, ET 200 SP card and if we go into this you'll see here I've got um, two heart cards um, that I'm, I'm utilizing at the moment I've got my devices on the first card so if I just look at the properties for that card so there's a couple of things that you've, you've got to do so for the channels that you're using to bring back the instrumentation you have to enable all the diagnostics and you have to enable of course the heart functionality so I've done that for channel 0 channel 1 and then on the AI configuration we want the value status because what we're going to get is we want the status from the milliamp signal so we've enabled all those diagnostics but we want the status from it um, but we're also going to get the status byte from the instrument via the, the heart information. So if I have a look at my I.O. tags now for that card, you can see here I've got input word because that's, that's my milliamp value. So that's one instrument and then I've got input word on uh, 80, that's the second, and then I've got the third on, on 82. And then each one of these is a status. So I've just assigned those tags so when I um, come to, to use the, the blocks, it's easier. So I'll have a look at the screen now. I can see my um, uh, table, symbol table that I've generated. And then I can see my IO card process values over here. So if you click on this button in TIA pool, you get split screen. So um, my pressure transmitter coming in via. Um, a double real word on 87 um, and then the status is the fifth byte and it follows that format for each of the heart process variables as they come in so get that mapped and ready and then you're ready to to go on to to the next step now we've got the hardware set up uh, couple of things we need to, to do first the um, the actual program uh, FB's function blocks are going to be called not from OB1 but from a timing block I'm already using OB30 for some timing on my Cirrex so I'm using OB31 so you may see in manuals you know, different OB's referenced it doesn't really matter um, the name I've renamed it to Citrans library so I can see it at a glance and then what we've got to do there's a few things we need to add um, this 
is over on the right hand side this is my um, library so I need to add this PID so you drag the whole folder and then whatever instruments you're using you drag over we're just focusing on the heart instruments to start off with so we have these two two blocks and then we need the template so if you come down here to master copies in your library you'll see the list H uh, HMI data so we can drag that into our blocks and then you just need to go in there and edit that and you can see here the the uh, the like mapping for the HMI for all the different devices so it's seen that we've, we're, we're using the pressure transmitter, so we just delete the ones that we're not using. We need, first of all, to bring in the uh, acyclic read-write function. And we need to set these two parameters here, HW head and HW L1, or LD1, sorry. And they're both the same, so they're the um, hardware address of the analog input card that these devices are connected to. So uh, if I go to my hardware screen, I can see here I'm connected to this card, and that is um, Stourport Heart 2. So you can change the name of that if you want so it sticks out so I'm going to call that um, to translib and you can see their Stourport ET200SP sit translib IO and I can see my hardware identifier so if I go back to my OB31 I can either type it in, but it should be there in, in the list. There it is. And then I can just copy and paste that, put that into to the other slot. So that's that block done. Now we need to add the um, block for the pressure transmitter. And then we have a couple of things we need to, to do down here. So the HMI data, so that's the first... Um, memory location in my HMI table so if I go to uh, list HMI and then just select the first line and then this one it needs to know where to get the acyclic data from well that's in in here so that's what you want so you want the acyclic data now the the, the next bit of information is is it's going to be physically where you've got the the card um, wired in and I know it says zero but I always like to see it go blue and then you've got your process value in well that's the analog um, version so we can see here int so that's and then we need the status byte for that Okay, now we can start bringing in our heart variables. So we'll bring in the P320 as a real. Okay, you can see it there. QCPV is the status point for the, for, for the process value. So you can see there I've labeled it up. If you want to bring in other values, you can. But for this particular example, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to... To, to leave it at one. Our limitation is the ET200SP card which is limited to um, four heart variables for the whole of the card and you've got four inputs. So we're waiting for, for more advanced IO to, to come out uh, where we can get more heart variables and of course Profinet unlock, unlocks that functionality. So when you've done that all that remains is to compile that and download it to the CPU. So once it's downloaded, if we go online, and I want to see if the process values are, are appearing on the, the right-hand side of this device. So my pressure transmitter itself 
is reading minus four. And I haven't um, read the, the, the block yet, but my statuses uh, are all healthy. So I've got the, the right information coming in here. So I'm just going to, to move my cell to give it a small positive reading. So I can see here that everything is healthy and I'm ready now to, to do the visualization start side of things. And I can see the process value coming through. The demo project has a few startup screens depending um, on where you are in your project. So you may not need to do all of this, but if you're using the demo project, if you copy over the, the uh, three main screens and you'll, you'll see those are probably they're here on the WinCC Professional Master Copies, these three screens here. Okay, so drag those over. You may not need those, that's what I'm saying for, for, for your project. Um, so you may be able to skip this section. You're going to take over then under um, scripts. We need this Visual Basic script dragging in. And then we need to take the tags and this is where you've got to be careful so we'll take the tags over and put those over and we just need to do a little bit of editing here now we, we delete the ones we're not using again similar to the uh, the corresponding UDT in the PLC program so we're only going to use the P3 20 so it's got the X because this can be used with the 320 and the 420 which changed my HMI connection so we need to change that to the correct HMI connection so you can see it's brought in my PLC but we still have a problem here so we need to rewire so just be careful what you do because if you have this ticked it's gonna change all the tag names in your project it could it could complicate things but it's easier just to one ticket select paths and plc must match and that's got rid of that so that's our tag table all synchronized um, i've already dragged this in but this is the the face plate so if you have a look under here there's a, a few different face plates and we are um, the uh, p 320 heart so I've dragged that in so now we just need to to link that so click on it go to your interface so with nothing in select HMI tag and if you click on like the little notepad symbol and just scroll, scroll down it should be there in the list so that's the first thing done so the next thing we need to do is what action we're going to have when we press the button so if you decide whether that's going to be a, a click or, you know, or a right click or whatever, it's entirely up to you. So, so go on to events and under events, you'll have this option to, to run the Visual Basic code that you've, you've put in. So do that. And then we need to know where the U, UDT data is and you have to type, type this in um, as a string. So first of all, change these tags to strings. Um, so it's just these two here that we have to physically type in. So where do we get that data from? Well, if we go to our list table, you can copy it if you want. So there's the start of your UDT table. Copy that. So, and then you can put that here. And then we need to know um, our, our symbol name for, for, for our start screen. So that is located. If we go to the Citrans P folder we've dragged in, we have this text here so you have to type it in exact all the way up to the underscore and then the screen number is just an int and put that in as zero because that's your start screen so we've added everything um, we need to compile that now and when it's compiled we can run the runtime visualization. So just make sure you're, you're selected at the top there. Once you've started your, your runtime session with the, the faceplates, 
this is uh, what you'll pre be presented with. So I, I've moved on with this project and I've added all of the, the heart devices. But we've been working on the P320. So you'll you'll have a, a, a process value, but you need to, to read from the instrument to 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 get it to, to, to do your scaling. So basically you program the instrument and this will read the scaling from the instrument and scale you in CC uh, and your PLC data. You click on this circle button and read configuration. You can see there on known firmware. So it will go through these steps, reading all my scaling parameters and we should see it bring back um, the heart value and the milliamp value should be roughly the same. So I can see here now that I have a, a minus reading on my um, display. It's brought back the tag. The tag is actually what is programmed on the instrument and I can see here now configuration complete. So we've got transparency all the way down to the field. We're bringing back the tag. We don't have to worry about programming that up ourselves. It's already there. And here I can see my my millibar reading. So that's my 4 to 20 millibar reading because it's just um, the milliamps is still being used for process control. And then there's the, the heart value. When you've reached this stage that you've pulled in the units and the heart and milliamps value are roughly the same. There is a slight difference and that will be due to, to the resolution of the analog to digital conversion between the, the instrument and the PLC card. So uh, don't be too concerned with that. But the faceplate is now functioning. So that concludes our look at the Siemens uh, TIA portal faceplate for Citrans P320. Thanks for listening.